Hello friends, welcome to e Shala. I am Dr. Shweta Dhaliwal from Department of Political Science, Rajiv Gandhi National University of Punjab, which is situated at Patala. The module that we discussed just now, uh, the objective of the module was to apprise you not only about the concept of region, but also about the fluidity of regionalism. To conclude what we discussed just now, um, it's very difficult and at the same time it is very interesting to understand what is a region, what qualifies a, a piece of land or a landmass to be called as a region. Uh, therefore, consequently, uh, it is very important to identify what are the different features of a region so that we can distinguish from one region to the other region. Also, which is equally important and interesting is how many kinds of regional organizations uh, can we can we do we have and can we have in future uh, consequently and within this point it is also very important to understand the features and the functioning and the structures and the organizational setup of these regional organizations i hope you keep learning from this module trying to define a region is very difficult at the very onset do regions have institutions or are they institutionalized do they have to be geographically distinct and coherent all the time? Do they have to be at a certain stage of economic development before they can experience regionalism? A scholar named uh, Kalea has argued over all these questions and he has concluded that there is no agreement in the literature on this point arguing that regions are de facto defined uh, by the interactions interactions which are of social and cultural nature which are also of political as well as geopolitical in nature uh, this uh, leads us to another aspect of uh, understanding regarding regions and that is on the basis of the uh, points mentioned above there are different uh, typologies in which we can categorize regions into the first typology would be transitional now transitional typology or transitional kind of regions have distinct features for example they are network based they are led by cross border interest groups and they have informal interaction the second uh, typology is intergovernmental uh, which are primarily led by governments and they are also led by interest groups somewhere exclusively somewhere simultaneously the third typology would be core or periphery regions. Um, they can be called as hegemonic regions also because they are dominated by one state of that geographic area or region. The next typology is international where all component states are roughly equal. And lastly, the transnational uh, wherein there are two subcategories further corporate transnational regions which seek to promote economic growth and societal transnational regions which uh, seek to tackle wealth inequalities. Moreover, regions uh, move along a range comprising five stages of regionness according to internal flows of senses of regional identity and global level variables. There is thus an emergent view that attempting a narrow definition of the term region is not likely to be productive and that instead theorists should concentrate on understanding the various processes of regionalization that are unfolding across the globe. Regionalism is by now a fairly established part of international relations, both as a concept as well as an experiment. The terms regionalism and regional organization are used by different scholars in the discipline or the offshoot of international relations. The term regionalism is flexible one, which refers to a particular region in the world arena. It has been defined on geographical, political, social or economic basis. The common sense regarding the defining of region is on the basic distinct landmass such as Africa, Asia, Europe, North and South America etc. Also Atlantic region, the Baltic region, the Middle East, Eastern region and the South Asian region may be viewed in the same sense. But all such explanations are not enough to grasp the dynamic concept of a region which is getting even more complex in modern times. There is no clear guide to identify the boundaries of a region. Regional organizations favor memberships to outsiders 
and many a times different regional organizations working in one region have their members coincided. Regionalization focuses by definition on process rather than outcome. Regionalization is a dynamic term implying fluidity and movement. However, it is not intended to imply that processes of regionalization can or should uh, only uh, progress or depend. Moreover, the term connotes a non-monolithic or multi-level focus because it uh, brings the scholar's attention to transformations of structures, process and agency at the regional level. Thus, the term is generalizable to some extent by which it could be applied to any instance of cross-border international regional formation in world politics. It expects a link between politics and economics but does not privilege one over the other. It allows for security issues to be a casual factor but does not expect this always to be the, the factor, at least if by security we mean military issues. It allows both normative and more instrumental factors to play a casual role, again without stating which is the more important one. Hence, it would not be incorrect to say that no deciding factor is found uh, what constitutes a particular region uh, reflects the perceptions, prejudices or desires of those states uh, who constitute a core group of regional activities beginning uh, with the six members uh, in the European uh, Union now has many more than that. Applications for the membership in different regional organizations also become flexible in order to accommodate countries lying beyond the geographical limits of that regional organization. Uh, students, please refer to table number 1.0 also in order to understand the geographical scope of different kinds of organizations, regional, global, sub-regional, etc. In 2003-04, the yearbook of international organizations identified about uh, 238 international organizations ranging from three members uh, organizations to more than 190 members uh, organizations. When these organizations are analyzed, it becomes clear that most of these are not global but regional in their geographical scope. These international organizations may serve general or specialized purposes irrespective of their geographical scope. Now, let's come on to the features of a region. I'll be highlighting and uh, mentioning some of them. First feature of a region is informational. For example, how do we identify what are the factors which make us believe that this particular region is qualified to be called a region. Second is normative, tendencies, history, the cultural fables or cultural knowledge which has always called a region therefore it becomes a normative understanding. Rule making, for example there are several overlapping understandings of a particular geographical unit for example Asia uh, has a lot of sub-Asian regions and within sub-Asian regions, certain countries are overlapping. When do we come to identify these sub-regions having overlap? Uh, is by way of rules, decisions, recommendations or some kind of law that is specifically made for these kind of regions or sub-regions. According to Joseph Ney, a regional organization is based on three conditions namely formal arrangement among governments, second is possessing diplomatic forms Third, assisted by an associated international bureaucracy. Many regional organizations are formed in international politics based on regional characteristics, conditions and objectives. Many scholars have classified the regional alliances into various categories, for example, cooperative alliances, security or military alliances, functional alliances, regional defense alliances and hybrid alliances. Regional organizations like European Union, ASEAN and SARC come under the cooperative alliances. But the question is, which is the most basic kind of an alliance in order to understand any regional organization? Please refer to table 1.1 uh, in order to, uh, to further understand the features of uh, different regions and regional organizations. Uh, for the purpose of discipline of political science or international relations, it is pertinent to note that there have been two major waves of uh, regionalization in modern era. Uh, the old or the first wave of regionalism roughly started in 1960s and was restricted to Europe. 
it was uh, protectionist in uh, nature and the purpose was mainly few economic gains. In the second wave, regionalism in late uh, 1980s changes its nature and became more global and made its scope more wider as far as purposes were concerned. Now, uh, targets were uh, not only economic gains but political harmony, social cultural ties, people to people contact, better world, etc. It has become commonplace in the field of distinguished uh, subject of political science to understand the comparison between the two waves of regionalism of 1950s and in of 1960s. There are however both uh, continuities and similarities between the so called old and new regionalism so that when studying contemporary regionalism one can easily get a feeling of deja vu. For instance, many regional projects and regional organizations were actually initiated in 1960s, 70s or early 80s and then simply renewed or re-inaugurated in the mid 1980s and 1990s. Under such circumstances, it is often difficult to separate the historical from the contemporary. In response to these continuities, we have argued elsewhere for identifying new patterns of regionalization coexisting with the older norms. But after two decades or so called uh, the new regionalism, the, the distinction has lost much of its original meaning. It is still relevant to identify continuities and discontinuities both in the term empirical practices and theoretical perspectives uh, for the purpose of understanding regionalism as a discipline or as a specialization. In what follows is the larger understanding of regional studies, focuses of regional integration and the differences of regional integration uh, in different regions. Even if this distinction between old and new regionalism has been uh, misunderstood, misquoted or misused and holds, uh, has also lost uh, much of its meaning, it is still consistent to argue for the continued relevance of so called new regionalism theory. Including the new regionalism approach which is the latest development, the new regionalism approach is a particular way of analyzing the phenomena of regionalism and is not dependent on a distinction between old and new regionalism elaborate on uh, furthermore aspects on regionalism. The early theories and approaches to regionalism were all concerned with peace and tended to see the nation state as the problem rather than the solution. The most relevant theories were federalism, functionalism and neo-functionalism. Federalism which in inspired the pioneers of European integration was uh, not really a theory but rather a political program. It was uh, skeptical of the nation state although what was to be created was in fact a new kind of state. There was no obvious theorists associated with federalism. In contrast, functionalism has been much identified with one particular name that of David Mitrani. This was also an approach to peace building rather than a theory. The question of functionalist was no uh, which political levels various human needs uh, which is often defined in a rather technical way could best be met. Usually the best way to find to be going beyond the national state system but not unnecessarily going regional. Thus both federalism and functionalism wanted the nation state to go but through different routes and by different means. For the functionalists the international organizations should be established in the promotion of cooperation and transnational activities around basic functions and needs such as transportation, trade, production and welfare. Economics was seen as uh, more important than politics. Functionalism rather was more technocratic and therefore a little unrealistic in thought process. Miltrani criticizes both federalism and regional integration in the general form because both are primarily based on uh, territory rather than function. For functional solutions there should be no territorial boundaries according to Mitrani. Territoriality was seen as the part of Westphalian logic and Westphalia implied conflict and war. However, in contrast to European community which was a political community, the European core and steel community was according to Mitrani a functional and therefore more acceptable organization. Now much of the uh, more recent debate on regionalism is strongly focused on conditions related to globalization or world order. In particular, 
as indicated in the subtitle um, of this uh, very module the relationship between globalization and regionalism constitutes one of the main concerns in the research field this contrasts with many if not all uh, earlier regionalism theories which were heavily concerned with the endogenous forces of regional integration contemporary regionalism is thus strongly related to globalization but there are as we shall uh, uh, continue to understand different views about the nature of this relationship our analysis rejects any simplified notions about the globalization and regionalism hand in hand together instead drawing attention to the diversity of or relationship in fact in a globalized world regionalism as such is not the appropriate object for theorizing the focus should rather be on the regional factor or dimension of global transformation trade blocks have been crucial aspect in the discussion of regionalism ever since 1950s according to new classical economics regional trading arrangements are often seen as second best and therefore judged according to uh, whether they contribute to a more closed or more open multilateral trade, trading systems embodied in the so-called stumbling block versus stepping stone dichotomy many of the regional trading arrangements had uh, existed during the era of regionalism in the 1950s and 60s where inward looking and protectionist uh, were often regarded by the contemporary economists as the failure now we should be focusing on or why do they want to join the club of regionalism or regional organization the reason number 1 is identity it is a shared percep perception of being a part of a region sometimes it can get a nation more respectable or reliable position for example east timor or south sudan uh, as we are speaking accountability by being a member of a regional organization a state increases its uh, stretch of influence and support and may use this platform to make its uh, offenders accountable or make itself uh, more um, present at the international platforms for example india is seeking a lot of support from all the international and regional platforms wherever it is as a member to get uh, permanent membership in un security council or the uh, nuclear suppliers group etc the next reason why states support regional organizations or want to support regionalism regional organizations give support to the members by way of uh, economic support political support or moral support etc next reason is internal and external threats members of regional organizations are bound better and closer because of common internal and external threats till the first wave of regionalism a great threat threat was communism to the western world hence regional organizations like nato came up the next region for uh, such an allegiance to a regional organization or regionalism is domestic politics domestic politics frequently becomes a significant variable affecting regional governance initiatives for example international agreements or treaties may affect domestic policies which may change the balance of power between the branches of government next reason is leadership regionalism being a tool of local governance also needs leadership from key individuals oblique states for example france germany us or indonesia japan india etc dear friends regarding the module which is titled regionalism uh, to conclude it will be very interesting to conclude that the regions have more than one dimensions to them a region is not defined only by its territoriality a region is rather defined by more many many more concepts like culture people to people contact political will economic status and will to become part of a particular region we've seen in the chapter that uh, some countries who are technically far away from the uh, territorial proximity of a regional organization also are very keen to become a member we also uh, have uh, studied in this module and it's also one of the very important conclusions that uh, it is very pertinent for states despite their sovereign status and despite their autonomy in the international relations it's very important for the states to remain member of some or the other regional or international organizations